modeling paste is part of our medium line. One way to think of mediums to help decipher all that is out there is to think of certain mediums as being grounds, your first layer that you put on, some that you can add to your paints and that they can change the body or the composition of your paint somewhat, and then you can think of finishes. Finishes are what you would put on at the end, and in between all of those, there's specialty mediums. It can be confusing, but it can be oh so exciting. And think of this as uh, if you were someone who did um, needlework or different things. This is sort of a sampler, so your testing page. The same as if you were making up different colors, you might make a little sample page of the colors you want to use in the mixes and proportions. So what I've done here is just marked off a piece of paper that I've already used. It's what I used in a previous printmaking demo. Now that might be a nice ground to put it on, and also it'll show up the white modeling paste better for you variety of palette knives with different shapes out at your disposal. Some that are very thin. This one I'm going to use for incisions. This is more of a long tapered trowel type. And this is a smaller with a much more fine chiseled point. And then I also have my other longer offset as well. So the first thing I'm going to start with is just in this section here, I'm going to start with the most straightforward stroke you can do. And that one, actually I'm going to use this palette knife for it. It's what I like to call icing, and I'm sure it's not the technical term for it, but you're applying the modeling paste the same way you would when you're icing a cake. It's the same way when you're painting thick with, like thicker paints, higher viscosity paints. You're just sort of using the very bottom of your palette knife, you're spreading it back and forth, and you're getting small nuanced overlays of the paste so that you're giving nice little areas in here where it stops and starts trying to get different little strokes happening in there. I'm gonna come down to the side. And that's all there is to that one. Just sort of, it's almost like you're skating back and forth. And then I'm going to do a reductive, or actually do an impression to create some marks. So I'm gonna put the modeling paste across the surface first. And I'm not being too careful here. Just putting it on. And it has to be thick enough so that I'm going to get some of these impressions. And I'm just going to push down and then I'm going to make just little marks like this with the end of the palette knife. I'm just going in, I'm squishing, pulling it out. As I come back, I'm pulling it up. I'm going sort of semi-straight. This is more of a geometric pattern. But again, that's gonna be so nice later to apply paint and allow it just to pool in some of those areas. So then, I'm gonna to go to the next sample area. And in here, I'm gonna do the opposite of what I did here. Remember here, the, the falling paste was already on and I did incisions. Here, I'm going to do more of an additive process where I'm going to take the modeling paste on my palette knife and I'm gonna add little drops and I'm gonna build up. So rather than being reductive, it's additive. And again, these are similar to sculptural, these are, well, they're not similar to, these are sculptural terms. You can do additive or reductive ways to create sculpture. And in a way, we're doing like a very flat relief sculpture right now. Now I'm doing a row in front of this row. Start similar to the way I had it before, where I'm going in, just laying it down. Now I'm going to use a bigger palette knife, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some suction so I get some veining, similar to uh, a stucco ceiling that you would see. And in here, look at these nice, simple, but can be very effective when used in a piece of work. And then I'm gonna do just a slight skim over that so it's not so predictable. Yeah. I'm gonna let that just sit for a second because I want it to set just a little bit. Because I think I'm gonna do with that is do some scratching in and do some incisions with this and scribing in. So let's see about 
what works for this, you can be very methodical about it. Do some like cross hatching. Uh, this is where the benefit of working on a colored ground is paying off because I'm automatically getting some neat effects with the red underneath. And finally, for the last section in here, I am going to put some modeling paste down. So a little bit of the seal in there. Again, I'm going to leave on purpose some of that red showing. It's a good idea too, after you've been working, to clean off your edges because in mass form, water-based products are less likely to dry out. So if you leave your, and also if you leave this whole area all caked up with product, it's going to be harder to open because it's, it's going to seal. That is a little bit of a cleanup, a little bit of a housekeeping. And then now in this one, I'm going to check this palette knife and see if it works. I'm going to do like sort of a rocking motion. I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to go like this. Doot, 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 doot. And it can give a really neat, so I'm going to slide, doot, slide, 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 slide. Got it a little thin here, so I'm going to go back into that. There we go. Got my rocking action happening now. And again, it's almost like a little shingles effect. Let's see. And those are basically different marks that you can use in any type of artwork.